Well, hey, sixth graders. It's halfway through Unit 13. We're halfway to finishing up the book. Today we're going to go over the mid-chapter review. You'll find that on page 731. Get your books out, page 731. You'll see uh, the next two pages. We'll just go over these problems here and the questions and give you some insights into how to get to the answer. Uh, the first section always is about vocabul vocabulary. The first one is, the blank is the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile of a data set. The difference between those two is its range. That's the inner quartile range. A graph that shows the median quartiles, the median quartiles and the least and greatest values of a data set is called, that's the box plot. Remember, that box plot has all that information available in that. The difference between the greatest value and the least value in a data set is that data set's range. So from the least value to the greatest value, the difference, subtracting the least from the greatest, that tells you what the range of data is in between. The mean absolute deviation. That's the mean of the distances between the values of data set and the mean of that data set. So when doing the mean absolute deviation, you're working with averages, what the mean average is of the entire data set, and then left and right of that, what the average is of those numbers on either side. Number five, make a box plot for this data set. And it gives you a data set there, 73, 65, 68, 72, 70, and 74. Now you remember, the first thing you got to do is line up your data from its least to greatest. So the least value there is 65, and then the next one is 68. So let's go 65, 68, 70, 72, 70, 72, 73. And what's the last one? 74. Alright, so we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let me double check and make sure 3, 6. Six numbers in a data set. So let's do our line. And we know that our data set's going to fall between 65. and 74. So, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74. Alright, so now there's our, our number line. Now, in order to build our data set, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out what the median is. And remember, the median is that spot right in between, in the middle of the data set. It's an even amount of numbers, so what you got to do is you got to take 70 and 72, add them together. It's 142. Divide that by 2. Your median is 75 or 71. All right, so that's defined for us. Now you got the median. Now you want to find the median, by the way, these two points here represent our least and greatest value. Now let's go in between. So here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six numbers again. 
So that means we want to find the center point of this number set and this number set. Now this one's pretty easy because it's only three numbers. So we know it's going to be right here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got to do these two together, which is 120, 135. So our point here is going to be 67.5. So we're going to be right here. So now all we got to do is box this. And there's our box plot. You can always go back and look at the video or review in your book. The next three problems are dealing with finding the mean absolute deviation of a data set. So let's just pick number six there. We've got 40, well, we've got five numbers, and the lowest is 38. There's our smallest number. Then it goes 40, 43, 46 and 48. Now, we're looking for the mean absolute deviation. Mean, mean, that means average. So we're going to add these five numbers together. And we're going to divide that by five. And that's going to be, well, let me get my calculator. Hopefully you all got your calculators. Hopefully this thing is going to work today. So we got 38. No, it's not going to work. All right, so let's just add it. We got 8, 11, 17, 25. Here are the 2, 5, 9, 13, 17, 21. Divide that by 5. It was in there 4 times. That's 20. So 43 is our mean. That's our average. So now, if 43 is our average, to find the absolute mean deviation, let's build our line. And we've got 38, 40, whoops, I'm sorry, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, and 48. And this 43 is our mean. You all with me? 43 is the mean. Now we're looking for the deviation. So let's build our dot plot. We've got one at 38. We've got one at 40. We've got one at 43. 46 and 48. So now we got to figure out how much they deviate from the mean. So this is going to deviate 1, 2, 3. So there's our first number, 3. This point is going to deviate 5. This point is right at the mean, so it's 0. This point is 1, 2, 3. And then this point here is 5. 
and that's all going to be divided by 5. So we got 8, 11, 16 divided by 5. 16 divided by 5 is 3, that's 15. So we got 1, let's put a decimal point, add a 0, bring down the 0, 5 goes into 10 twice. So our mean absolute deviation is 3.2. You guys are good at this. Now there are a couple other problems there. Do the same thing. Line the numbers up. Get the average of those numbers. Build yourself a dot plot. Count the number of spaces left and right of that mean. Divide that by the total number of data points and that gives you your mean deviation. Find the range and interquartile range of data. So looking at problem number nine, we've got two twos, a three, two twos, a three, a four, and an eight. So our range on this data set, this is the least, this is the greatest. So you subtract the least from the greatest, our 8 minus 2. So your range is going to be 6. Now, the inner quartile range. Let's build our line here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so now that we have our number line put together, first thing we want to do is we want to determine what the median is. Remember, within a quartile, we look for the median. And the median of this set of numbers, the number in the middle, which is 3. So we're going to come over here, and this is our median. Now, it wants the inner quartile range. In order to do that, we've got to find the median of everything that's right and left of this median. So on this side of it, we've got 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. 6 is the number that falls right in the middle of that data. And over here, you've only got one number, and it's 2. So now what we're going to do is we're going to build... basically our dot plot and because it's two on this side and six on this side we're going to add those together two plus six equals eight and because we had two numbers we're going to divide that by two so the inner quartile range is two our overall range between two and eight is six and our inner quartile range then determined to be 2. You got to keep at it. And as long as you're keeping at it, you'll figure it out eventually. 
you got to keep trying to remember the steps. When we're doing interquartile range, we're looking at medians. When we're doing absolute mean deviation, we're looking at mean. Mean and median are two different things. Get really solid on the difference. On the next page, Yasmin keeps track of the number of hockey goals scored by your school team for each game. And if you look at problem number 12 on page 732, you see a dot plot there. And the question they're asking you is, where is there a gap in the data? And well, there's data at 0, there's data at 2, 3, and 4, but there's no data between 0 and 2. So the gap would be at 1. Then it asks, what's the interquartile range of the data shown in the dot plot? So let's go ahead and draw that dot plot. It goes from 0, 0 to 4. So there's our dot plot. We got two dots at 0. We got three dots at 2. And two dots at three, and one data point at four. Now, it wants us to find the interquartile range. And you're sitting there thinking, well, how am I supposed to do that? Each one of those data points represents a number. And that set of numbers would look like this, zero, zero, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, and 4. So you're taking those data points, what their values are, and you're lining them back up in a set of numbers. Now we can find the median of that set of numbers. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers. So that means we've got to go to the middle here. Take those two numbers, add them together. That's 2 plus 2 equals 4. Divide it by 2 because we had two numbers. And it tells us that our median is 2. So there's our median right there. Now, it wants to know what the interquartile range of the data shown is. So now we have to go left and right and figure that out. So over here we've got 1 and 0. In between that is going to be 0.5. One plus zero is one divided by two. That would give us the center point. So it's going to be right here. Now over here, we've got three and four. That's seven. Seven divided by two is going to be 3.5. So that's right there. So now we have created that information. So here we are at 3.5 and 0.5. Now how do we figure the range? Well, we add those two together. And that is 0.5 plus 3.5, which equals 4. And because we've got two numbers, we're going to divide that by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So our interquartile range is 2. Everybody see that? 
I know this stuff has just got to be totally <coughs> clogging up your minds. But, you know, once you get this, you really are going to get it. And then it, it's actually kind of fun to map this stuff out. Now, they did try to trick you on that one because they didn't give you the number set. They gave you the dot plot. You had to convert that to the number set. Let's look at number 14. Randall's teacher added up the class score for the quarter and used a histogram to display the data. How many peaks does the histogram have? And explain how you know. So how many peaks are there? Well, the peak would be that bar that you see in the graph that goes from 701 to 800. That's the peak, the highest point. So that's the tallest bar. That would be your peak. Number 15, in a box plot of the data below, where would the box be drawn? Okay, boy, they're really hammering this box plot stuff on us. We've got a set of numbers there, and it starts with 37, 37, 41, 49. So 37, 41, 49. Then we got 50, 55, 50, 55. What do we got after that? 55, then it goes 62, 64. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers there. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so we got it right. Now, it wants to know where the box is going to be drawn. So the first thing you got to do, we're going to build a box plot. So let's get our line. And we're going to go from... We'll start with 35. We're going to go up in increments of 5 here. 35, 40, 45, 50. Oops. Boy, I'll tell you, sometimes my brain. 55, 60, 65. All right, that's going to cover our range of numbers there. So the first thing we got to do is we got to find the median. And we've got eight numbers again. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven numbers. So I made it easy for us. The middle number, 50, is our median. So here's our median. at 50. So now we've got to find the inner quartile. And so if we go left here of these numbers right here, we see that 41 is the middle number of these three numbers left so 41, which is just going to be a little past 40, is where that point is going to go on your box plot. And then when we look to the right, remember we're going left and right of the median. We got 55, 62, and 64. So 62 is going to be our interquartile range to the right of the median. And now all we got to do is build the block. So our points are going to be 41 and 62. I hope you all see that. Anyhow, that's our review for this lesson. Go over it. Practice those problems. You can go back to the videos. You can go back to the lesson in the unit. Uh, when we come back, Let's see where we're going next.
you can bet it'll challenge your minds. So we're going to look at choosing the appropriate measure of a center and variability. Remember we talked about variability uh, last Friday. So take a look ahead at the next unit or the next lesson in this unit and we'll be back tomorrow. Meanwhile, stay safe, stay out of trouble, have a good day.